Huge waves of corruption have spread across the world, corrupting everything it touched, causing mutations and converting everything to tech variants. Multiple tribes have all become incredibly hostile towards all survivors in the quest to achieve Predator Aura, a symbol that only the fiercest survivors can ever hope to achieve. I want to become the first, so in order to do that I need to defeat the Tech Broodmother Tech Megapithecus, Tech Dragon, and the Tech Manticore, all while fending off the hostile tribes, trying to stop me in the hopes that they would be first. While I spawned into Valguera on a beach, immediately spotting a Tech Bronto, I doubt that I could tame that with my fists. So I started picking up stones, punching a tree using the multiple implants in my arm to make a pickaxe, as in this mod pack you spawn with a variety of different abilities that we will explore throughout this journey. I used the pick to gather some flint and metal, the hatchet to gather wood and stone, and my implant to build a basic wooden box. I set up a storage, made myself some spears, threw the spears into a pteranodon's head and harvested its meat and hide, before ending off the day with a bed and hide armor. I bowled and killed- oh. I guess I didn't kill the Pteranodon, so I turned and killed the pig nearby instead. You end up doing a lot of murder playing Ark, but hey, you need a lot of hide. At least until I get to tech tier, which I plan to do in no time at all. I crafted a bow, arrows and a forge, placed it down in the morning to begin smelting the chunks of metal I found in the rocks, grabbed the hot ingot straight from the fire with my hands to make a smithy, placed it down and upgraded to fresh new metal tools. I set up a mortar and pestle so I could start my drug empire. But now I need a herbivore to gather me a ton of narco berries. So I made up some tranks, bowled a parasol and filled its head with trank arrows. Knocking it out, grabbed some berries and shoved them into the para. Then as I was watching the sun rise on day 4, my parasol tamed up and I named him Linkmon900, as was redeemed by my Twitch chat. As yes, I stream daily on Twitch, so make sure you come follow me using the link in the video description. I headed off on Linkmon the Para up into the mountains where Kano spotted no. me and began to uh, attack. Can you run? No, stupid Kano. Don't kill my parasol. No! I'm sorry. Please leave me alone. Run! No. To fight. There you go. Kill the Mega Theory. Kill it. Oh. Well. Thankfully that Megatherium was able to save me, only for Microraptor to show up. No, no, ow. Um, passive. What? That's a tech compi. Uh, come, come on Link1, come on, 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 come on. Let's go, we gotta go, we gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, 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 go. No, I'm gonna die. No, run. Uh, are you coming down the hill? Nice. Well, um, that was close. Thankfully, Linkmon never died, but decided it's best to just leave him at home. So I tranked out a second Parasaur, used Linkmon to gather berries and shoved them into the new para, while I headed off up into the mountain in search of crystal. Smacked a couple rocks before parachuting all the way home. Dropping into day 5, I had a Bronto stomping all over my base, and the Parasaur was almost tamed up. So I tranked out a Terra, led the new para to my box who I chose to name Perry when the Terra teamed up. Now, I wasn't a high enough level to make a Terra saddle yet, so I crafted up an Ornithopter. This thing is awesome! Not quite the power of flight I expected, but hey, sometimes you need to walk before you can run. So I'll consider this the first step towards eventually getting that Predator aura. I did have a tech Microraptor harassing me who I eventually bowled on one of my Patreon's foundations, as yes this is recorded on a server with access to my Twitch subs and Patreon. But unfortunately the Microraptor didn't give much loot. And zooming off into the sky in the morning, I crash landed on a nearby island where I came up on a tech Pelagornis, as well as TikTok. No, not the dancing videos app, a huge white crocodile. Now that thing looks awesome. And you know what? If I'm to truly prove myself, I want to defeat one of those by day 100. So I have to achieve Predator Aura and fight a massive white crocodile. Should be a piece of cake, right? Well, just you wait. I bowled and trank the tech pelican, but in order to tame these I needed fish meat. So headed off on a fishing trip with my crossbow, and I did need to repair my ornithopter, so ran off in search of something for hide. Killed a piggy, repaired my handheld copter, and flew off back towards my base, only to come into land a bit too fast. Yeah. Running back, I recovered my stuff and my pelican before tranking out a tech piggy. There was even this cute little sinister Jaboa nearby who looked relatively harmless. 
but my piggy tamed up so made him follow me and began the run home. And as day 7 started I set up a hitching post to tie my pig onto. As for those who don't know, in Project K, which is the mod that all these tech dinos come from, when they are placed on wandering they will generate a huge variety of different resources. So you really want to be taming many different types and mounts of these tech dinos. So I attached my pelican to the hitching post as well, saw that my pig was generating me oil and I shot and killed a stego so that I could harvest its body for more hide. But I really needed something stronger. If only I was able to get myself something like a tank. Perhaps even one from one of the most comprehensive vehicle combat games ever made, War Thunder. With over 2,000 tanks, planes and ships where every vehicle is incredibly detailed right down to the individual components or an extremely immersive experience. Even when you're dying you see the amazingly detailed vehicle damage models. None of these health bars that you see in other games but an actual damage x-ray that shows exactly what happens to you or your enemies as they're destroyed. There is no extra hardware needed either. You can fly any aircraft with nothing more than a mouse and keyboard thanks to the intuitive mouse aim system. And if you don't have a PC you can play for free on Xbox X, S, PS5 and PlayStation 4. I found the atmosphere in this game is truly better than any other thanks to all the effects you can experience while playing. And now you can download War Thunder for free using my link in the video description and you'll receive a large bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles including my favorite being the Stu 42G, experience boosters and more. Thank you War Thunder for sponsoring another video. Well that was an out of body experience. I continued harvesting up the stego before making my way back up the mountain where I killed a second stego as I needed their keratin to make a pelican saddle, harvested it up, made the saddle and took flight. It did feel good to have some actual wings, but pillars are slow, so I tranked out a level 140 Terra, shoved in my prime meat, then finally it tamed up on day 8 only to be short of the chitin I needed for the saddle. So I flew off on my pillar when I, you guessed it, ran out of stamina. This has very much become a recurring theme on the channel, but hey, at least I had a parachute. That said, even a parachute didn't save me as I ran out of stamina again. Yeah. I feel like I would need people in stream just to constantly scream stamina at me. Respawning at the base, I set up my pteranodons to begin breeding as there's a special feature about these which will be discovered soon. But right now I just wanted some backups. I hatched up my baby Terra who we named Bob before imprinting it fully so I could finish raising up and headed off down the beach. When I came up on that cute little sinister Jabola from earlier who I bowled and shot in the head with my crossbow. Oh, you have a friend, uh, I'll just take this and leave. Well, um, that was unexpected. As I respawned at home, I noticed a glowing egg by my terrors, hatched it, and out came a deviant pteranodon. In this mod pack on very many creatures, you have a chance for them to lay a better version of that creature. In this case, a deviant pteranodon, and it was twins. Well, while they were raising, I set off down the beach to recollect my equipment, only to get home and find Durflus was visiting on their wyvern. I named one of the fully grown deviant terrors Malkarian, and then flying off in the morning on Malkarian, I did kill a tech runner that exploded into a ton of pieces. And I finally made it back to where I died, grabbed my things, saved the pelican, and flew off to continue my quest of what I actually wanted to do. I wanted to kill some penguins for their organic polymer, but Twitch chat reminded me that I can just harvest the beach dolphins, and that seemed way safer up until a Ludodactylus chose to attack me. I eventually escaped as they lost aggro and safely flew home with my polymer. And I found in the morning that my deviant pteranodons can shoot lasers. Now this could potentially be quite useful. So I set up a soul terminal to collect all the babies from my terrors before hatching a bunch of eggs so that I could detonate the babies for experience. As well as set up my deviant terrors to breed as well. And I flew off on a terror to collect a blue drop nearby when a tech terror bird tried to scare me off. As I noticed a nearby bush glowing with an intense blue light. I jumped off on my terror to find this was a crafting orb. Arguably the most important and lucky thing I could have ever found. And I got home and threw the crafting orb on the floor as this is where things get interesting. Using the orb on my magnet implant, I threw seven electronics, four polymer, six ingots, eight element dust and a pickaxe into the micro black hole that had formed and in doing so popped out an element infused ground spike gloves. Now this thing is insanely overpowered. 
it gathers tens of thousands of resources in seconds. It was insane. I can't wait to get my hands on all the other element infused objects throughout this 100 days. And I flew off in the morning of day 13, where I again saw TikTok just hanging out in the water, but he was not my goal. I was in search of a base location, so I flew far and wide searching for a cool base spot. I finally chose to settle on a high cliff on the edge of the chalk hills, place down some foundations as well as some storages, before flying home where I came across Siren Head, yet another monstrous boss that I have to defeat at some point through this 100 days. But for now, I had another creature to kill, this damn Bronto stepping into my box. So I began to shoot it before just sending in every creature I owned to kill it, which they did with ease. I harvested the corpse of the Bronto and threw out every one of my Pteranodons. I wanted to move to my new chosen base spot, but I had a lot of stuff. So I trapped up all my land tames and began to dismantle my box, picking up each and everything before transferring it all to my PTs, before taking all on the epic quest to lead my convoy of flyers on the slow flight to my new home. I had Kayetsu, a Twitch sub, stop by to say hello and gift me a chibi, but they have some of the coolest armor I had ever seen and I really want to get myself a set. I spent some time on day 15 expanding my foundations as well as setting up some walls and gates, including a nice wood accent to highlight my build. Yeah. I got no clue what I'm actually doing when it comes to building, and I ended off the day placing the remaining structures I needed, including the GG buying station. And I bought my first set of armor in the morning, a full set of cobalt steel riot. A decent upgrade from the hide. I hunted and killed some of the tribesmen wandering the plains for their tokens, as in this mod pack you get these GG tokens which you can use to buy different things, and it's also how I bought my current armor set. And once I got home with enough tokens, I bought myself a jetpack. Now this is the next upgrade to flight. I did first have to set up a couple forges for gasoline, but it was time for takeoff. This mod just has a ton of fun things for you to try for yourself and many unique concepts and ideas. And as I was zooming around on day 17, I spotted the tech dragon off in the distance. One of those four bosses that I need to kill in order to achieve predator aura. Yeah, not ready for that. So I just flew off as I needed obsidian, which using my ground spike made it incredibly easy and the jetpack allowed me to carry it all home. And day 18, I was out hunting on my Pteranodon where I decided to fight my very first tribe mech. There we go, come on. Kill the mech. You should die fairly easily. There we go. I think Dragon Queen deserves a special Discord roll. Yeah, um, um, we probably do need to give like. Yeah, I, I, I didn't quite expect it to explode. I got back to my stuff with the new Terra killed a nearby tech kangaroo and was then fighting a beast master that I killed as a furry killed me. I probably need to be more careful. And I spawned back at the base where I set up my terrors to breed just so I'd have some more backups before recovering my terror and my loot. And I was flying home in the morning when this happened. Uh oh. Okay. Fly up, fly up, fly up, fly up, fly up, fly No, we gotta save it. Fly, fly, fly. Did you kill it? Well, that could have gone terribly. Thankfully, my terror did kill it and I was able to fly home to clear up my inventory before flying off to go gather some crystal, eventually arriving at Crystal Cave in the north of Valguero, and I found my ground spike simply refused to work. Well, that's disappointing to say the least. So leaving the cave in the morning of day 20, I flew off towards the redwoods in search of some more crystal nodes, harvested up a ton of metal, gold, and crystal before beginning the long flight home where I gave myself a haircut to become my true natural causes self. Set up a mortar and pestle to practice my best Heisenberg impression before setting up an obsidian forge so I could begin smelting some of the higher tier metals. As I adventured off in the morning flying through the sky, I eventually found myself a nice large cluster of crystal that I was able to harvest with my ground spike, cleared out my inventory back at my house, cooked up some meat in my campfire before buying myself a cobalt long neck. Even though I didn't have any cobalt yet to make the bullets, so I set off in search of some new tech creatures to tame, and I eventually found and began shooting a tech stego with my crossbow, and finally had it down and sleeping in the evening. Raced home to gather berries and starvins, and flew back, shoved in the berries, when I noticed a chaos floating around nearby. One of many incredibly deadly boss summoners looking to find me and kill me. He hadn't noticed me yet, but I needed the stego to tame up fast. 
Then as my stego tamed up in the morning, the chaos summoner spotted me as I scrambled to make my escape. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, 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 go. oh my god! No! Fly! Fly up into the sky! What the, the I'm sorry! No! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Go, 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 go! Go! Fly! Escape! Phew! If not for that jetpack, I would have been dead. I finally landed back at home, but that was way too close. I really have to be careful of those summoners. But for now, I needed some noxious mushrooms, so flew off to the aberration cave, where I threw out my stego and began farming dozens of mushrooms. I did spot a green gem golem, who I felt best to just avoid. And once my pockets were full of many different resources, I began to make my way home where there was again a chaos summoner waiting for me right outside the cave exit. I can just tell these things are going to be a problem in the future. I looted a drop in the morning that gave me some fancy obsidian leggings, spotting a space whale flying around while I was making my way home, where I made a bunch of cobalt darts and then flew off in search of some rexes to tame. But the chalk hills were just full of death and destruction everywhere. I did find a tech dive bear, basically the same thing as a rex, right? And I was able to trank it out but had to fly home to grab some kibble, when I noticed I had a loot drop in my inventory. Opening it gave me an ascendant crystal sword. This will be fun to use, but I went to my bear first, so I flew back on a terra, shoved in the kibble and it became my friend. I spotted a dodo ultima on the beach as I was almost home. Now these things are necessary to farm as their seed bags become very important later on. But for now, my one seed bag gave me a kelp seed, which I was able to place in a crop lot to begin my very first farm for kelp. Yes, it's more useful than you think as in this mod pack, kelp is actually more effective than major berries. I tamed up a dodo on day 25 and trust me when I say this might be my best tame yet but we'll learn why later in the video. I also tamed myself a Bronto and tranked out a Tech one too, just to add to the collection, as well as a red Tech Carbon Nemesis. Hey, when I said you need to tame a ton of these Tech variants, I meant it. I trapped up the Turtle as well as a Bronto who had been named Littlefoot. I jetpacked off the next day for yet more resource grinding, and while my ground spike makes it incredibly effective, you go through these resources extremely quickly. It was day 26 as I went off in search yet again when I spotted a ruin pretty close to my base. I just really have to hope they can't find me, else I am screwed. But I really wanted to get myself some powerful creatures, so I flew off into the underground in search of some Spinos when I spotted a loot drop that I wanted to get my hands on. Oh, hi, Gollum. Hi. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> that just almost ran straight to that golem. Note to self, <laughs> check out the area before landing. I tranked out a level 145 Spino, but now I had a problem. It was surrounded by crabs and fish. The only tame I had brought with was my Deviant Pteranodon that I couldn't ride due to this being a giant cave. So it was time to take matters into my own hands and pulled out my pointy stick before charging in to murder the crabs. Ha! Get wrecked. Well, the, that actually worked. I fully expected to die right there. I tamed a tech trilobite nearby who we named Metal Forehead, but now I had three more crabs that needed to die. Screw it, I'll fight you all. I'll fight you all. Fight, die, kill the gargoyle, die. It's 150. Kill it, 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 kill it. Yes. We did it! In the morning, I shoved my meat into the Spino for it to begin taming up, as well as force fed a trippy mushroom so it would sleep for longer, before killing a Sarko who was trying to attack me and tranking out a male Spino so that they'd be able to mate. Once they both tamed up and I got out of the river, I named one Beep Boop and the other Banan so that I could begin my flight home, where in the morning I set up the Spinos to begin breeding while I spent my time setting up a generator and aircon to be able to quickly hatch the eggs. However, I had a severe lack of oil, so I flew off into the night in search of the oil cave. As I entered the cave in the morning, this is exactly what I needed as I harvested the entire cave in seconds with my ground spike. Now that I had plenty of the freedom fluid, I left the cave only to be ambushed by a cobalt golem. Well that hurt, 
I finally got back, collected all my stuff with the transfer tool as I was not going near that golem before beginning the flight home. I had a toxic spino hatch out of an egg in the morning that I began to imprint as I figured it would be worth testing out so I started making my way out the base only for Ludodactylus to attack me before I could even leave. Thankfully, my terrors were able to kill it before it did any real damage so I set up a tech fabricator on day 32 and now this is where you can craft a ton of tech related items from Project K. I was searching for fish as you can use their flesh for silica pearls only to drown due to a Ludodactyl attacking me. This is a short. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm so dead. I was on the surface. <laughs> yeah. So I had to do a naked death run and take a leap of faith into the water. All you doubters in chat. I recovered my things and flew home with the distinct lack of the fish meat I wanted. So I went swimming again in the morning to spearfish with my sword, but I instead found some silica pearls I could just collect with my hands. So once I got home, I filled in my ceiling before heading off on a terror to ransack a bunch of beavers for their lifelong belongings. Once I got home, I did name my terror Frosty and set up a power generator to power my tech fabricator that I used to make myself a tech forge so I could begin smelting tech ingots. I set up a tech elevator to get to my ceiling so I'd have more space for my dinosaur breeding escapades and I almost died to a dodo in the morning, simply due to it exploding. I probably should be more careful, but I really thought exploding dodos were only in primal fear. But I tranked out a level 145 dodo who I tamed up with my kelp and we chose to name Burnt Milk. I set up a replicator droid and a refinery that I intended to use to create a bunch of items from Stark Wars later on. This was a Sky Knight, one of the many tribesmen, and I figured I could tame him to force him to join me. In order to tame the Sky Knight, you do need special meats, so as I searched in the morning, I eventually found, killed, and harvested a tribe mammoth for its raw human flesh that I cooked up and flew back to learn my Sky Knight simply wasn't interested. I mean, I cooked him premium human flesh, and he just didn't want it, so I instead killed a nearby turkey, flew home, cooked it up, and this time he instantly became my friend. I named him P3ST, one of my patrons, before fighting a Styrico and being able to fly up pretty fast. This guy's actually pretty cool. Once I finally got home, I set up a tech fridge that was extremely thin for some reason, before finally setting up my dodos to begin breeding. And in the morning of day 37, I saddled up my Spino before charging in to fight a Deviant Spino. Sorry, damn cheaters, what the s Well, uh, that didn't go very well. <laughs> Rip Toxic Spino, you did not last very long. I killed a tech Bronto with my sword for its electronics as I needed more tech ingots. So I set up a fancy forge to smelt up some more steel to end off the day. I was chilling in the morning when suddenly... Ha ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 <laughs> I did not stop to look, no! God. God. Damn, a Margosaurus. I was able to kill it with my Terra and recover my things before taking the time to craft up a set of Furasteel, only to notice a Tribe Mech Knight was trying to harass my base. So I just let him off a cliff. And that's when I noticed there is a Mandalorian armor. And this is the way. I also made myself a blaster sniper, Testing it out, it was pretty strong as I killed a mech and a bunch of other dinos. All part of the training to eventually achieve all powerful predator aura. And when I got home, I had some special eggs from my dodos. Deviant dodos. Let's just say they make some interesting noises when they uh, do the deed. Yeah, they're a little loud. I made myself a DL-44 heavy blaster and it was really fun to just run around blasting things. Sometimes it's good to just have fun in these mod packs, but things won't always be going so well. As little did I know, the summoners searching for me across the map were getting close. As I continued blasting in the morning, I set out in search of more tech dinos to tame, when I found two tech mammoths who I trained and tamed, naming Linkmon and Manny. When on my way home, I saw a little mouse droid who I hacked and tamed, only for it to die as I tried to name it. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to put the battery back in, so I tamed an R2 to replace it, and it just turns out that these are not the droids I was looking for, as they were just completely useless. And as I ran around looting beavers for their, all their life savings, 
killing any who try to stop me as I was just collecting this cementing paste, silica pearls and rare flowers. When I came up on a tech beaver dam that I looted for all of its tech savings. On day 43, I crafted up a ton of electronics as I had a plan to create my very own first tech creature. A green wyvern. I named him Caustic before flying off and this wyvern is incredibly powerful. But it felt good to be able to just lightning zap through all of the tribesmen and their tames in the chalk hills. Only to get stunned off by a hunter and instantly killed by my wyvern. I recovered my things in the morning before saddling up a deviant spino to test it out, fighting spinos, brontos, a mech and a lightning griffin. I chose to name him John Dees as was redeemed by Twitch chat and as I was hunting more ultimate dodos for their seed bags, I started to get swarmed by creatures but thankfully was able to kill them off. I tamed up some overs when suddenly a ruin spotted me. Oh crap, crap, this is bad. Well, uh, uh, that could have been bad, but at least I survived, so I continued to just massacre all of the weak things. When I saw on my map, there was a raging archer. As if this raging archer is able to get hold of the predator aura, I will be absolutely ruined. The next day, I was killing a bunch of wyverns before beginning to fly off into the wyvern trench and... Nope, 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 nope. I am not going in there. So I left only to have a mighty tribute wyvern follow and get me killed when he dismounted me. Gonna need to have a talk with Caustic. He keeps killing me. Once I respawned, I found I'd gotten some dodo rexes from my deviant dodos. Now these are what I wanted. Except I couldn't make the saddle to ride them. So I flew off on my pteranodon on the quest to save Caustic even though he killed me. Well, I mostly just wanted my stuff back. I whistled over Caustic to the safety of a ledge before hopping on and flying down to recover my things. I got home to see some of the giant eggs my dodos were breeding but not which were for the dodo rexes. As I explored for more tech creatures I ended up killing a salt golem. This must have slipped in from official PvP when I threw out some of my dodo rexes before whistling them in to charge in and take out a tribe mech knight. Get him! Charge! Get him! There we go. They killed it with ease. So I sent them in to fight my very first tribal chief and they absolutely shredded him. Except the minions afterwards just melted the Dodo Rexes. I'm likely gonna need something even stronger than just Dodo Rexes if I plan to kill some of these bosses. I did at least get some loot crates which were stacked full of loot and I cleared up the rest of the tribesmen left behind before beginning my flight home. When once I got home, I placed on the most cursed hat I had ever seen. I am truly scarred. So, you know, I chose to wear the head for a while. And in the morning, I set up a couple foundations before building up the greenhouse walls, roofs, and crop plots. I populated all the crops with my seeds that could begin growing, as well as hired a gardener to tend to all my crops. Day 50. Halfway to my goal of achieving Predator Aura. There were so many more bosses plaguing these lands that I need to kill, I was not feeling confident. So I flew off to boost my confidence by killing some tech creatures when I came across not one, but two deviant broodmothers. These guys are beefy. So I chose to massacre the beavers instead. A much easier target, except I chose to dismount too soon and died to Caustic. Caustic and I are gonna need to have a talk. I got back to my stuff in the morning, stole the beaver's belongings and killed their family before tranking out a Fenrir who we named Banan. And I hatched out a ton more eggs as in this mod pack you really need to do a ton of breeding to get the more powerful variants. I finally had enough dodo rexes in the morning to set them up so that they could begin breeding and one of the eggs I got was for taxidermy rex. So I left them to incubate while I did some work around the base and I set up an Exodus game logos in my base even if it was a bit skewed. And throughout my taxidermy rex and this guy looks almost like a rex that has been skinned. But I saddled him up and he could even fire off fire spikes out of his mouth. As I headed off in the morning munching on things to test out the damage and he was pretty strong. But I figured it was time for a real test. So I threw out a cup on a cliff before sending them in to charge at a tribal chief. Yeah, they got shredded. Once I got home, I did have a tribe mech who had followed me home and I killed with Caustic as well as a mech knight who chose to attack. Just glad my base is on a higher pillar and that chief could not be left if he was going to keep throwing mechs at me. So I flew back. Threw out a bunch of Dota Rexes who were clearly superior to the Taxi Rexes and whistled in the giant Rex birds to take on the chief, which they did with ease. It was glorious. So I figured it was time. Time to take on a real boss. Not these piddly little tribal chiefs. 
So as it struck the next day, I summoned in the Tech Broodmother. Hi. Get him. Get him. Get it. There we go. Let's go! <laughs> that is the first of four bosses dead. So I set up my artifacts at my base as proof of my kill against the Spooder before using the crafting orb I received from the kill to imbue a full set of flak with element. Now this is a real set of armor. Able to launch me with huge momentum, take zero fall damage and run at mass speed. I felt powerful. In the morning, I was zipping through the sky in my fancy new element infused flak as I planned to test out my Dodo Rexes against the raging archer. They got stomped into a pancake. So I flew off to just cut my losses only to fly straight into a Dodo Rex. Oh, come on. Well, that sucks. Well done. Now I just have to get my stuff back. Oh, rip again, I guess. I eventually got back and recovered my belongings and in the morning I did spot a level 145 Rex and if the Dodos gave Dodo Rexes, I was keen to see what the Rexes could pop out. So I began to trank it out and eventually got it down and sleeping only for a War Strider to come out of nowhere and ruin the tame I wanted. So I just left the Rex to its death and I got home to find a bit of an explosion that I had to clean up before just setting up a grinder and shredding all the saddles I had accumulated through this playthrough so far. While I was zooming around on day 57, I found a tech archer. And if you know me, you know I love these things. So I had to tame it, tranked it out, but now I had to find chitin. I eventually found a snail I was able to kill with my sword. And then as I was slowly running home, I spotted a tech thylacolio hanging out in the trees that I was able to trank out. Fed it some lamb chops and named it Chaotech Colio. I did have to re-trank out the archer, fed it some chitin and it became my friend. It was so much fun to just zip through, hanging onto its feet as we sped through the redwoods. I found myself another crafting orb and saw this as a chance to get the tech crossbow. Threw out the orb and you might notice there is an item that I had left on the floor. So the craft failed and I got radiation poisoning. Sometimes I surprise even myself with my mistakes. So now I have to find a new orb. So in the morning, I threw out my Dodorexes in preparation only to realize I was way too close to my base. So I led them out into the hills and summoned in the... Oh, it bugged. And that's when a ruin spotted me. No, <laughs> I need to hide under the Dodorexes or I'm going to die. Oh, I am overweight, I am... I'm, I'm about to die. I, I, I can't see anything. My army and I got completely massacred. Everything was dead. I managed to recollect my things and a few survivors of my army that had managed to hide in a crevice. And thankfully I was able to escape the site of the ruins before they were able to cause any more havoc. I eventually came across a memorial hall that had been built by Maple, one of my Twitch subs, and it was fun to just take some time off and see what others are up to on the server sometime. In the morning, I threw out my army again to fight the tech broodmother yet again for a new crafting orb, as I really wanted that tech crossbow. That's not okay, why did there so many Dodorexes die? Oh no. There we are. But we squashed that spider easily, even if I did lose some Dodo Rexes. Then once I got home, I summoned a crafting black hole, threw in my resources, and now I had an element infused crossbow. With the ability to change how much dust is used per shot, this is what I needed to tame even more powerful creatures. I set my crossbow to 500 element dust, which is half of the maximum damage. That's 10,000 damage! Holy cow, that is insane. I tranked out and tamed an imposter with my cooked lamb chops, only for it to just crumple to the floor and die when I tried to test it out. Kinda sus if you ask me, but oh well. So I came across a deviant Astro Cedars. So I reduced my crossbow to just 65 dust, then knocked out the Astro Cedars in a single shot. I managed to jump and land on top of the space well before shoving in my meat, and it was mine. I chose to name him Richard Davidson. Can I do the blink? I can. There we go. Whee. I was wandering the snow when I came across the new Arc Dino. 
Carcharodontosaurus. Now, I didn't feel like actually taming one of these, as you have to drag it corpses and stuff in order to tame it. Something I did share on Twitter the day it released, but I felt like testing my crossbow so tranked it out in two hits. Before using my deviant Dodorex that I'd hatch from my Dodorexes to kill off the car car. And as I was running through the mountains on my way home searching for more tech creatures, I spotted a level 145 griffin that I tranked out, shoved in meat, and it was tamed as the day was coming to an end. I found a level 150 rex that I tamed up in the morning before zipping through the chalk hills where I was able to trank out another level 145 rex. But this was the chalk hills, one of the most chaotic sections of the map. And that's when one of the tribesmen came in with his gravity grenades. Like, damn man, I, I just wanted to tame a rex. Is that too much to ask? I found another rex who was locked in a heated battle and tranked it up before killing off the rest of the fighters. Now, I just had to get some prime meat. Just had some raptors to deal with. Yeah. My crossbow exploded in my face. I got back in the morning after using my tech archer to flap my way back to the stuff only for a raptor to assassinate me. I eventually recovered my stuff, taming up the rex and flying home. In the morning, I set up my deviant dodo rexes to begin breeding when as I was running around, I was hit by the most powerful attack ever. SCOM load shedding. And as I was loading in, my absolute worst fears were realized. While I had no power, my base had been found by some ruins and almost completely wiped. Walls, foundations, crafting stations all gone i was devastated absolutely demotivated but i could not give up now i still had my artifacts so there was still a chance to achieve predator aura and thankfully they had not been found by the ruin while i was ransacking my base so i spent the next couple days rebuilding my base and it was finally day 69 Nice. When I began to throw out a bunch of deviant dodos, as these extinct chickens will passively generate element dust and shards, a resource that had become very useful to me since my crossbow uses it as ammunition. And I was searching for a cave when I found a free crafting orb that must have dropped from one of the tech creatures before making my way into the cave nearby as I was in search of some loot drop. After I'd spent my morning jumping around a cave trying to grab loot drops, I headed off again as I still needed to find myself a female Rex. But searching through all the chalk hills, they seemed to just not exist. So once I got home, I scanned to see if I had any Dodo Rexes still alive after the attack before setting them up to breed as, well, I would lost my Deviant Dodo Rexes, so I needed to get them back. I threw out all my tech creatures in the morning, as if you remember, the tech creatures in this mod will passively generate resources when left on wonder. While they were chilling in the base, I was on my way out when I spotted a ruin, but it spotted me too. I immediately jumped to get out of random distance, but now I had a problem. The boss was right near my base and I need to find a way to deal with it. I wanted to shoot it with my crossbow so I could aggro it away, but of course I had no dust for ammo on me. So I flew off into the lands where I found and killed a tech piggy for some dust, got back to the base and shot at the ruin, but it was not interested in me, as it aggroed onto my base and fired its projectile. So many of the tech creatures died, with nothing I could do about it. So I de-rendered the ruin just to get some fresh air, and as I came back it had forgotten about my base. So I took this opportunity to jump in, and that's when I saw the ruin was actively scanning my base. I knew it could only aggro on me or my tames, so I trapped up all my creatures before they were spotted. I spent some time setting up fabricators to craft up electronics as I needed them for tech ingots, when I noticed the ruin had absolutely vanished. Well, for now at least. It's day 74 and realistically I am nowhere close to ready, so I wanted more tech creatures and summoned in a tech Anki. Not sure why considering I already had a god pickaxe, but thought it's worth trying out anyway. So I trapped it up and flew off to my metal nodes, only to realize I forgot a saddle. I was flying home on a wyvern when a spino hit me, dismounted me, and my wyvern killed me. Just don't have a good relationship with these wyvern. I eventually got back, whistled over the wyvern, and recovered my gear and headed home. Day 75 and 76 ended up just hanging out at the base, doing some repairs, breeding some dinos, killing some dodos, and massacring droids on the beach. I set up a replicator in the morning of day 77 as I was tired of searching for creatures. So I had the plan to make a SS tech transmitter, which allows you to scan for any dino on the entire map. One issue, I hadn't unlocked it just yet. 
I still needed to defeat the boss that unlocks this tech round. So I crafted up a new tech wyvern in hopes of getting a good level. We named him Boris, only for me to immediately get dismounted and killed by Boris. Guess the name wasn't so good. Eventually got back on Boris and recovered my things before just heading home. In the morning, I threw out an army of Dodo Rexes yet again, as well as some tech wyverns before summoning in the tech manticore. It eventually died after having been stuck against the barrier that forms when you fight a boss, but now I only had two more bosses I need to defeat in order to acquire the Predator Aura. I wanted to make my tech transmit in the morning only to be short of black pearls, so I flew off towards the crystal cave so I could enter Valguero's underground ocean. I was swimming through the ocean, or lake maybe, whatever it is, only to suddenly realize my element infused black does not give water breathing the same way a tech suit does, and promptly drowned. <sighs> I got back with the scuba set, but one feature of my flak set that was pretty important, it stopped creatures aggroing onto me. Ah! Swim faster! Swim! Swim! <laughs> this is not okay! This is not okay! So now, a bunch of Liviaton whales chased me, trapped me, and ate me. I traveled back on my Deviant Spino, only to get one shot by a Cobot Golem. Lovely. I flew back this time with the spino in my pockets, scooped up at the entrance before plunging down into the depths, fighting off tons of Leviathan, searching through the dark, watery abyss. I eventually found and recovered my things halfway through day 82, found the black pearls I needed, eventually escaping in the morning of day 83, before beginning the flight home where I set up my transmitter so I could finally scan for dinos. So using this newfound knowledge, I found and killed a level 140 power griffin, I mean, I was hoping it was tameable, but nope. And it was midday around day 85 when I finally had enough of this damn ruin. For too long it had been harassing me, and it was time to take it down. Jumping on Cheeto, my latest wyvern, so I cleared out a nearby hunter to prevent getting dismounted and flew into battle. Dead, down goes the ruin. The fiend who had destroyed my base twice. I knew that would not be the last ruin I had to deal with, but at least now I knew I could. Flew off to the snow as I planned to fight the giant Monke next. Threw out my army of Dodorexes before jumping on Cheeto as we summoned in the tech Megapithecus. There he is, get him. Ah, gotta move, gotta move, gotta move. Get him. This was by far the easiest fight so far, as Cheeto's lightning shredded the Monkey's health. Now, all that remains is the Tech Dragon. I was flying home when I spotted a Siren Head, and seeing how I still had my entire army, decided to send them into battle. Dodorexes were dying, meteors were flying, and ruins were summoning even more dangers for my army to face. This fight was a rough one. Wave after wave of Dodorexes were sent into their death. Bionic Rage. I don't think I like that. Why, why does it have Bionic Rage? <laughs> that is so dead. But eventually the Siren Head was defeated. Now it was my turn. So I flew in on Cheeto to kill yet another Ruin. But this time things did not quite go as well. The Ruin had summoned in a minion which grounded me and a tri banshee wyvern killed me. So as I respawned I got back on a pteranodon, grabbed my loot, jumped on cheetah and finished off the Ruin. At least I was dead, but feeling demotivated I spotted a deviant Lystrix on the way home and I was able to easily cheese with cheetos by simply hovering above it and zapping it to death. At least that was easy, so it made me feel good. I set up all my artifacts from the monkey on day 88, and now with only one boss left, the tech dragon, I was so close to the ultimate goal of Predator Aura. Now for those who don't know what it actually does, the Predator Aura brings you unforetold power. It allows you to tame anything. Alphas, bosses, everything becomes at your mercy. So if I hoped to be able to defeat the raging archer, I was going to need this power. I repaired my crossbow as well as ground up a ton of element into dust before heading off to tame Ark's most powerful carnivore, the Giga. 
I knocked out in a single hit with my crossbow. I did have to kill War Strider who had decided to try to kill my Giga, so I knocked out the Giga again, shoved in my meat and Narco Berries. Now that was enough for the Giga to become my friend. In the morning, I ended up taming a Tech Pego who I chose to name Pego Cat Lapur before flying off to tame another Giga so that I could begin breeding them. And that's when I came across TikTok, the giant white crocodile who we'd seen earlier on. So I threw out my army Charge! and whistled them into battle. Go in, my minions! <laughs> that did not go to plan. Um, it, it shredded through my Dota Rexes. So I came back in the morning on Cheeto only to get one shot by the giant croc. Rest in peace, Cheeto. My most powerful wife and decimated. So I spent the rest of the afternoon trying to set up a vehicle crafter, but it wouldn't work. And in the morning, I flew off into the chalk hills as I planned to fight the tech dragon. Landed on a hill and summoned in the dragon. Yeah, I got dismounted and died. So I ran back on my Skyrider, but this time with an army. Threw out an army of Dota Rexes to fight the dragon. I was able to recover my things and continued fighting the dragon myself. Charge! There we go. Come on! I want this dragon to die now. It was a long, drawn out fight. But finally on day 93, I brought down the dragon. That was the hardest boss I have faced yet. But I defeated it. I now have everything I need to be able to gain the Predator Aura. I set up my artifacts at the base to ensure I had everything I needed. And I had one last look at the crafting recipe from my crafting orb before collecting all the artifacts I needed. Set up a chemistry bench so I could make up some narcotics and stimulant. Only to find I was short of resources for the Mind Wipe Tonic. So I tranked and tamed a Bronto to help me gather some berries. Saddled it up. Harvested the bushes I needed. Made some narcotics so I could make the Mind Wipe. And then in the morning, I created the crafting black hole, only to throw in slightly too much element. So I had to cancel the crafting so as to not waste my artifacts if it fails, but that again gave me enough radiation to feel as if I'd just visited Chernobyl. Threw out a new crafting or black hole, threw in my element artifacts and mind wipe tonic. Resulting in a predator or a gumdrop. This is the ultimate power I need to be able to bring down the Raging Archer. I just have to find something I can use it on in order to tame. Maybe some of the tech bosses that had been keeping the artifacts. So I flew off to the snow biome where I summoned in the Megapithecus. Quickly jumped out of the way to prevent myself dying and consumed the Predator Aura. Monkey, come here, come here. I think I missed. Um. Monkey? Uh, my weapon broke and it didn't deal topple. What? It didn't work. All this time, I had been told of this predator aura power only for it to be ripped from my grasp in the final moments. I was going to need a new plan. So once I got home in the morning, I set up a bunch of Dodo Rexes to begin breeding as I had only a few days left before the raging archer would learn off my location and spawn right on top of me. So I wanted an army ready and waiting. So for the next few days, I bred some Dodo Rexes, tamed more Gigas and prepared for the upcoming battle. Cause this was going to be a rough fight. And flying off on day 99, I needed to find a spot that would give me the upper hand in the upcoming battle. And I eventually came across a high cliff overlooking a large plains area. So it was here where I began to throw out my army of Wyverns, Taxidermy Rexes, Dodo Rexes and Gigas. I had brought hundreds of creatures for this battle and I still felt like it wasn't going to be enough. As I was taking one last look at my army, the sun rose to signal day 100 and that's when the Raging Archer tore open a rift to spawn right on top of me. The army all charged in as the Archer began to materialize. The <laughs> so about that army being big enough. What is this? <laughs> I've just seen red. There is only red, and it's not taking any damage. Everything died faster than I could ever have anticipated. My wyvern died right underneath me as I fell to the floor. And my armor was barely keeping me alive as I deployed my shield to prevent any more damage as I desperately tried to run. But the archer had brought an army of his own as one of his meteors fell from the sky, 
finally ended my life. I had nothing left. No army, no armor, no nothing. I had failed. I wonder if any of my alternate visions that I've been having lately will have anything powerful enough to defeat this god. Thank you again to War Thunder for sponsoring the video. Download it for free today for some epic bonuses to start you off. Thanks for watching and enjoy the next video.